Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and in my last video, I introduced you to these Copic Acrea markers, talked a lot about their properties and how you use them, etc. But today I want to do something a little different, but I want to let you know what's in that video in case that's the kind of thing that appeals to you. These are paint pens, which means they have paint in them. It's not ink just because it's Copic doesn't mean it's ink, it's paint. And I swatched these on both black and white. So you can see what they'll do on both colors of paper. And there's also a few that have some shimmer in them. There are four sets. You can buy them in sets or you can buy them individually. And I believe it's only available at Blick. But these three projects, I drew a scene from one of my different classes. And I'll talk about those as we go. And I stamped on top of it. I want to see how the Copic Acrea pens cover over top of mediums. This one was just on black paper, no stamping, and it's in the previous video, linked in the doobly-doo. So I wanted to talk about stampers because I've had questions from those who do a lot of stamping. And I wanted to see how these pens will color over top of different mediums. So I'm going to start with a colored pencil. And I grabbed my sketchbook, which I had used when I made the Winter Wonderland colored pencil class. And I wanted to find the scene that I thought would be the toughest for these markers maybe to tackle. So there was snow that was already painted with actually thick paint. You can kind of see how thick and chunky it is. And I thought that might give a challenge to these pens. I want to see if they'll cover it where the stamp is going to be right over top. And I really wanted to do this because a lot of you took my classes in the past and you might have a sketchbook sitting around with a background like this and you didn't do anything with it. Well, I want to find out, can we take those old sketches that we did and combine them now with some stamping using these Acrea pens? Now, I know some people will just die cut the image and stick it on, but I don't like to do that. I, I like to make it feel like the image belongs in the drawing itself. So here I'm stamping him in a waterproof ink because these are uh, water-based pens. So you want to use a waterproof ink. And I didn't stamp the feet. Like I didn't get that on the ink pad so that he can look like he's setting into the snow. And then just started working on it. Now the pens that I got, there's two sets that I purchased. One is the uh, Essentials, I guess they call it. And it has a black and a white a silver and a gold, and a gray and a, a brown. And it's kind of like not exciting. It's not purples and pinks and yellows and that sort of thing. But I think it's probably the most useful if you just want to get a set of pens to try and see how you like them. I'm not big on paint pens myself. And I didn't find it real easy, as I find with all paint pens, to get the paint to go on like thick and matte. I was expecting to be able to make it look kind of like a nice flat gouache. And that didn't happen. They, they just always felt really chunky. The pens need a lot of TLC. You need to shake them pretty good in order to get them going. And you can see I'm kind of pressing to try to get enough to come out to cover that colored pencil. And this is light color of colored pencil, but it's thick. I used a lot of colored pencil to achieve that. So, it, you know, it's trying to fight the, the waxiness of the pencil. I drew a hat on top as well. When you draw a hat on top of something, if you cut off part of the head, then it makes it look like it's kind of sitting on the head rather than just kind of floating above or behind the head. So out of the hat to it and then use the same pen. This is the Peacock Green. And this is one of the colors that's in the deep color set. So that's the other one that I got. And that's the other one that was in the swatch test if you were looking at the bright colors. And just put a heart there in the middle with a little bit of the peacock green going around the hands so, or the hands, the flippers. So it looks like he's holding them. And then just added a little bit of blue in the background of the snow. And that makes him look like he's setting into the snow itself. Uh, to finish it off, I wanted to see, okay, how does this stuff layer? Can I put one more layer of something on top? So it looks like he's also in the snow rather than in front of the snow. And that worked fairly well um, overall. I wasn't dissatisfied, and you can certainly do it, but when you look really close, you can see it's kind of chunky. It's, you know, maybe there's technique that I'm just terrible at that could be, but I just had trouble trying to get it to be nice and smooth. 
But if you are experienced with paint pens, you might totally know that I have done something wrong. So please do tell me if so. I would love some tips. Now, this next one I'm going to do is a, a Crea with watercolor. I did a painting of a galaxy. I have a galaxy mini class, which is really fun. And I used just two colors, well, three colors, actually. It's three blobs of color, a toothbrush, and some gouache in order to make all those stars. And this is a very old set from My Favorite Things. And I stamped it, and he kind of disappears in there. But I wanted to test this because I wanted to see if I used the Copic Acrea over top of a staining color and then also over top of white. I wanted something that's going to border the two so we can see, does this cover over top of the color as well as it covers over the white and are you going to be able to see any difference now when i looked at the images that copic provides to blick you know they provided little pictures of art you could see that there was some stuff you could see under the overlap so i think maybe it's not just me <laughs> because whoever the artist was that created the little doodles on the website if you look at that you can you can see where colors were layered but you know, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm just going to assume that that's the way paint pens work. And that's one of the reasons I haven't used them very often in my history as an artist. I have a couple of them here, but mostly white pens for, you know, white pen usage. Here I was trying to color like around the lines so I so the arms would show up. If you did the Acrea work while the art is in a misty, a stamping platform of some kind. Then leave it in there, do your your Copic Acrea work, and then re-stamp over top of it, because that might actually help to make everything kind of work out so that you get those lines back without having to draw them. I've done that with gouache, and I will link a video in the description down below if you want to see how I handled that. Uh, this was in a sketchbook, so I didn't worry about trying to do that. I figured I'd just draw it back in. Now the face, there's a gray pen and a white pen, so I wanted to make the polar bear gray just so he's separate from the scene, and he's backlit as well. So there's a little white highlight on one side, and I used a brush to move the color with just a little bit of water on it. These are water-soluble until they're dry. Once they're, they dry, they're permanent, and they, they won't lift again. So you can use that to your advantage in, you know, waiting long enough for it to dry so that you can put some other color on top of it, put a pattern on something, etc. But here I've colored the sweater in the Acrea. I've left the mug in the sky kind of thing. So he's got a, a mug that matches the sky behind him, which is kind of funny. And then, you know, did a little bit of line work there with the black pen. And I also grabbed a little bit of watercolor since they were all out. Just used my dirty water to create some snow color. So literally just my messy, dirty, dirty water <laughs> and put a shadow behind him. So that light coming from behind him casts a shadow on the snow. You can see a little difference in where the sweater was covered over the dark background color as well as where it was over the light white paper. So there's a bit of a difference, not huge, but, you know, take that into account if you're going to use these acrias with your watercolors. Or it might be a, a hue and value thing as opposed to doing it over watercolor. So this one, you can see there's two dogs in there hidden in the scene. This one is from the holiday interiors class, a whole bunch of inside scenes. So if you have a lot of stamps that are inside, you can take that one and learn how to make scenes with those kinds of stamps but i'm gonna color these two dogs from colorado craft company and i'm gonna color them my, like my dog it's one reason i love this stamp set because i have a golden retriever and then i have a, a black and white kind of mixed dog and the two of them are just best friends they love each other to death and uh yeah all the dogs that appear in my videos end up looking like my dogs so this is my giallo and i'm painting him in the gold pen. I eventually just kind of covered over the back legs and I figured I'd draw them back in because you know, drawing around in between them is kind of an issue. I think putting it in a stamping platform is probably the way to go so that you can re-stamp on top of the color and then get those crisp outlines on the top. 
but it does cover, I think, the Copic marker better than it seems to cover other mediums. But of course, because it was made by Copic and they made it for their people, so that kind of makes sense. You know, it also can be the colors, but here I made sure that I made a really complicated tree so I could see, am I able to, with these pens, cover enough of the dogs so that you don't really see the tree transparently through the dog. And I also didn't want to make the dog solid black. You know, I don't have much color choice in terms of trying to make anything look realistic and, you know, me and trying to make realism. But I needed something to make it look like it wasn't just a big flat white dog. So I combined the white pen, used the white pen to do the legs and the head and then the outsides of the body. And then I'm going to use the gray pen on the interior. And it's just going to give it a little bit more difference in value, just a slight bit, so that it feels more like my dog because she's all, uh, she's got one little spot on the back of her tail and then two spots over her two eyes. So she's always fun to add on any kind of a piece of art. So again, I did still struggle with trying to get that flat coverage. And I did find that a second coat seems to work well to go back in after it dries. And it doesn't take long to dry at all, just a, a minute or two. And you can also do a little heat set if you want. Just get out your heat gun and zap it for a second and that will make it work. So here you can see the gold on the dog and the silver on Vienna's color. So they do come out nice and shiny. So I'm gonna link you to all four sets in the doobly-doo down below if you're interested in them. And uh, yeah, that's about all I have for these Copic Acrea for now. Uh, let me know what you think of these. Are you gonna get yourself a set? Which ones might you want? Do you need that gold and silver? All right, I will talk to you again soon. Take care, bye-bye.